Hey Magic fans, welcome back. It's Captain Clyde and we're here for Strixhaven spoilers finally. So we talked about these first two cards here uh, not too while uh, long ago in one of the actually opening videos. We have Professor Onyx. You can see there it says Legendary Planeswalker Liliana. Uh, new ability on her is Magecraft. This is whenever you cast a copy or instant of a sorcery spell. Uh, an instant or sorcery spell or a copy of it. Each opponent loses two life, you gain two life. Very interesting ability. Uh, she's two black and four for five loyalty. Her plus one is you lose one life, look at the top three cards, put one in your hand, the rest in the graveyard. Not too bad. That could be useful. Uh, minus three, each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. This could be something for the EDH decks out there. It says each opponent, not opponent. And then each opponent may discard a card for minus eight. And if they don't, they lose three life, and they have. Then you can repeat this six more times. So that's seven. That's 21 life. That's a kill. Um, and in EDH, Commander, and other things like that, uh, that are singleton, this could be, uh, especially group games, a, a winning card if you get it up there. So not too shabby. Big fan of Liliana. Love her to death. So moving on, we have Kazmina here. Uh, this is the Enigma Sage. One blue, a green, and a colorless. Uh, it says each other planeswalker you control has the loyalty abilities of Kazmina Enigma Sage. So that might be a bit much, especially since she has a plus two and a scry. And that can get people to go up quick, kind of like Liliana, for example. Although a three color deck might be a bit much. Uh, other than that, though, we have minus X, create a zero zero green and blue fractal creature token. It must be a new token card. Uh, put X plus one plus one counters on it. So you're basically getting a vanilla creature which at best can be for three mana two two unless you plus first then it's a four four you gotta wait a turn pretty underwhelming uh her minus eight search your library for an instant sorcery card that shares a color with this planeswalker exile that card then shuffle you may cast that card without paying its mana cost well considering it's going to take at least four turns to get there after turn three is turn seven uh seems very underwhelming again uh just for the simple fact that by that time, you could just play a Nugent. So, uh, not too bad, though. Still cheap. Uh, loyalty cost plenty Walker. So, moving on. Next, we have the next land series. And this land series, ladies and gentlemen, is the follow-up to the land series. Uh, as it says on the card, enters the battlefield to reveal a swamp or forest. So, basically, if you want the blue-green one, I'm sorry, blue-green, you want the black-green one, you show a swamp or a forest. If you want the red-white one, you show a plains or a mountain. And it enters the battlefield untapped. So that's pretty sweet for a dual land. Um, so, I mean, I'm just really glad to see the rest of this finally coming through. Here's the red-blue one. Frost Boil. Then we have Shine Shadow for white-black. We got the red-white one. And, of course, we also have the old Simic or blue-green. Um, so then moving on, we have a common... Introduction of Annihilation. Five generic mana. This is the first lesson. So later on in the set, you're going to see cards that actually do things when you cast these things called lessons. Um, this particular lesson lets you exile target non-land permanent. Its controller draws a card. Eh, I don't think this is going to see very much play, but in Sealed, this is going to be a hot card. I mean, five mana, exile anything... I mean, it's exile, not destroy. Yeah, they get to draw a card, but this is anything. We're talking creature, planeswalker, enchantment. The versatility on this is just bonkers. Heck, it may even see some standard play. Uh, five mana is a lot, but just the ability to exile and any permanent, which means any deck can run it. Who knows? This might be the next big card for black. So next, we move on to our next common. We have the introduction of prophecy lesson. This lesson here is three colorless. It says to scry two, then draw a card. Once again, don't see much standard play in this, but as far as sealed goes, I think this is top of the charts. I mean, three generic mana. It goes in any deck. It doesn't matter what you draft. You scry two and draw a card. You can literally go three cards deep in your deck if your first two scries are bad. For three mana, that's all colorless. I think it's pretty sweet. So moving on to our next lesson. Or, I'm sorry, now we're at the gins. Uh, we have Waterfall Aerialists. See, Gin Wizard, a blue and three colorless. 3 1 Flyer with Ward, two. So, it says here 
Whenever this creature becomes target of spell or ability and opponent controls, counter it unless that player pays two. So Ward is also a new ability. Uh, you'll notice that the symbol inside of it is a colorless two. Uh, that number is going to be different for a lot of things, I feel, uh, moving forward. This one, as a common, is just mediocre, but this could really be something on some of those more powerful cards, like maybe even Mythics. So as we move on to our next card, uh, we have another generic card, Expanded Anatomy, three colorless lesson. Put two plus one plus one counters on target creature. It gains Vigilance until the end of turn. So that's pretty sweet. Doesn't tap to attack. Gets two counters. Uh, draw back. It's a sorcery. This will probably see uh, draft play, but I don't see us doing anything really spectacular in actual standard itself. So moving on. Next, we have the first day of class. Do 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 do. Just like a good old anime, right? One red, one colorless. It's an instant. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control this turn, put a plus one plus one counter on it, and it gains haste. Not too bad. And this here is learn. It says you may reveal a lesson card you own from outside the game, put it into your hand, or discard a card to draw a card. So this is where the lessons are going to come in very handy, because cards like this, um, even if you can't get a card from outside the game, just the ability to discard a card and draw by revealing a lesson, that could be pretty sweet in the right scenarios. So moving forward to our next one, we have the eager first year student here. Uh, human wizard, white and the colorless for 2-2, two, two, not too bad. This creature has magecraft. If you remember what magecraft is, it's whenever you cast an instant or sorcery or copy one. Uh, whenever you cast instant or sorcery spell, eager first year gets plus one, plus O oh, until the end of turn. So not too shabby for a little vanilla creature. Might have promise in uh, a few things. So here we have uh, three cards. We have another lesson. We have pet summoning. Uh, Multi-castable land with black and green for three total. Create two 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature tokens. With, when this creature dies, you gain a life. So, not too shabby. Uh, next common, pop quiz. Blue and two colorless. Draw a card. This also has learn, so you can actually discard a card and draw another one. Uh... Or get a card from outside the game. So in essence, um, for three mana, this could be a draw two at an instant. If you took a card from outside the game and put it into your hand. Um, eh, I, it might have some promise. I, I think it's got a little potential. Uh, Professor of Symbiology. Well, uncommon white card here. Oh, white one cutlass, two one. When the Professor of Symbiology enters the battlefield, you learn. So that could be pretty sweet on this card. You know, you may reveal a lesson card from uh, you own from outside the game, put it into your hand, or discard a card that you draw. So for two mana, you get a 2-1 that lets you selectively pick a card from your sideboard, basically, is what I'm looking at here. Uh, in draft, I think that's going to be a big player, especially if you get a couple good lessons in there while you're at it. Move forward again. Uh, we have some Apprentices. So this is part of the apprentice cycle, which every uh, every color is going to have an apprentice. Um, apparently, I've snapped off a, a dwarf shaman in there by accident. My bad, guys. Uh, they all have magecraft. They're all one for every color. Uh, the silver quill apprentice, uh, whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, yada yada, it gets plus one plus zero in a turn. So for basically the same thing as the white card. So there's some good synergy there. Uh, the blue green one, whenever you uh, Use your Magecraft. You look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a land card from among them and put that card into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom in any order. That sounds pretty sweet. Um, for blue-green, that could be pretty powerful, to be honest with you. Uh, Prismatic Apprentice uh, on this one here. Uh, it says it can't be blocked this turn if the spell... Uh, oh, it says... Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, whenever, oh, whenever you cast it. Okay, so basically, it can't be blocked. And if the spell you cast had a mana value of 5 or greater, you get a plus 1, plus 1 counter on the Apprentice. That seems a little rough for a 2 cast. Uh, let's see here for Lorehold. Uh, do, 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 do. Until the end of turn, spirit creatures you control gain tap. This creature deals 1 damage to each opponent. Um, yeah, not so much. Uh, and while we're here, we'll hit this little dwarf up here. Red and 3 cuddleless. It's a 2-2 two, two Dwarf Shaman. Storm Killing an Artist gets plus 1, plus 0 oh for each artifact you control. It also has Magecraft. 
Uh, you get to create a treasure token. Okay, so for four mana, that's probably a bit much because it's only a 2-2. But especially in draft, you get this thing going and start casting some instant spells to clear the path of this guy to get in. He just keeps getting bigger as you get those treasure tokens. So he seems pretty sweet. Moving on. Ah, uh, here's the last apprentice. So it's the black green one, and this one says, uh, of course, you know, it's a black green card. So of course you would lose one life, your opponent would lose one life, and you would gain one life. You know, what else would it do? Uh, moving on. So uh, we have a modal card here, Torrent Sculptor, two blue and two colorless. It's a Merfolk Wizard. It has War Two, which we talked about, can't be targeted unless you pay two extra. When the Sculptor enters the battlefield, exile an instant or sorcery card from your graveyard. Play number plus one plus one counters on the sculpture equal to half that card's mana value rounded up. Woo. That could be something. I mean, it's already a 2-2. Two, two. As long as you exile something that's four in your graveyard, you're getting a 4-4 four, four for four. If there's something real big in there, who knows what might happen. Uh, so for the sorcery side of this, we have discard a card, then draw a card. When you discard instant sorcery this way, the uh, flamethrower Sinatra deals damage equal to that card's mana value to target creature or planeswalker you control. Very multi-purpose, nice, rare, doesn't seem overpowered, very versatile. If you can't deal damage to something because you've already wiped the field, you can make it a creature. If you have the creature and you got, they got something bothering you in the field, you can kill it. Really like this card for a rare. It's not bad at all. Be pretty big in, in a draft, I believe. So this one here, uh, what we've got now is these are what they call the deans. So every school, uh, this example here is red-blue. Uh, has two deans that that basically govern that school or that house. You know, if you want to refer to like, oh, Harry Pop Pop Um And so in this one, for example, we have the blue one. We have looks like you you Lydia, ah, Dean of Perfection, blue and two colorless for two two. Legendary creature, Gen Wizard. You may exile an instant or sorcery card from your hand and put three hone counters on it. It gains at the beginning of your upkeep of this card is exiled, remove a home counter from it, and when the last home counter is removed from this card, if it was if it's exiled, you may cast it. It costs four less to cast this way. Hmm. You may exile an instant or sorcery card from your hand and put three home counters on it. Upkeep if this card is exiled, remove a home counter from it. When the last okay so so basically this card um, just gives gives suspend to anything and then makes it cost four less when it comes off suspend for a minimum of three counters. Very interesting. So that's probably got some real good promise with those high mana cost spells. You know, turn three, get this out. Turn four, put it on suspend so it's four less. So even if you don't hit your land drops, you can cast something that's like seven, eight, nine, ten mana for only six, you know, five, four cost maybe. Uh, got some potential. So the other side, we have an free At the beginning of your upkeep, exile top card of each opponent's library. Until end of turn, you may cast spells from among those exile cards, and you may spend mana as though it may have any colors and spells. Whenever you cast a spell from exile, put a plus one, plus one counter on the Sari, the Dean of Expression. Wow, five mana, four, four, withdraw in red. That seems pretty sweet. I mean, just the fact that it says... You know, exile the top card of each opponent's library. Uh, even in one-on-one, -on -one, you're getting one card. You play this in EDH, Commander, or some kind of big group game, you're talking two, three cards every upkeep. You don't even have to cast your own spells. You just cast everybody else's. And there's no restriction on mana. So, man, that's that's a really nice card. That might actually see some play. Five for a 4-4. Four, four. So, as we move on, we have the next set of Deans here. This is the green and black Deans. We have Valentine, the Dean of the Vein. One black for a 1-1. One, one with Menace and Lifelink. If a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. If you do, you may pay two colorless, and if you do pay two colorless, you may create a 1-1 one, one black green pest creature token with when this creature dies, you gain one life. Wow, for a 1-1, one, one, that's a lot of abilities. I mean, I think we almost might need a bigger text box for that. Just, that seems to do a lot. Uh, the green side of it is, looks like Lissetti, the Dean of the Root, two green, two colorless, human druid, Whenever you gain life, you may pay one cutlass. If you do, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain trample to the end of turn. That's just what white life gain need right now. Yeah, just a way to put something on the field, gain one life, and just pump the team to oblivion. Plus four mana for a four four. 
This looks like a card in green black that's easily playable. I mean, worst case scenario, you got a 4 4, you know, for 4 that's vanilla. Gain life once, and it could just be just in the game. And if you play them in sets, you know, Valentine himself has life links. You're guaranteed to gain life if you draw. You know, the things about these Deans that I like is if you draw two or three Deans in your opening hand, they're still playable cards because there's two sides to them. It's not like you're stuck. I'm like, oh, I got a legendary creature, vampire, warlock, Dean. I need to make sure he dies or, or whatever. No, no, no. You play Dean. If you got two of them, you play Dean first. On turn four, if they haven't dealt with him, you just play the other side and play the Dean or Root. And now not only are you gaining life, you know, you're pumping your team, which will pump Dean and vice versa. I mean, it's a, it's a one-card combo. I mean, it's just insane in my opinion. But – I honestly don't think it's that overpowered because removal spells are a thing. You have to have two of these in your hand. You only have four in your deck. So it, it may not be too big of a deal, but that th this one here seems pretty sweet. So next we have uh, Shale, the Dean of Radiance, which is white and a colorless, flying vigilance, 1-1. One, one. Not too bad already. Uh, tap it, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature that enter the battlefield under your control this turn. Hmm. So it could be strong. I mean, it has Vigilance. You can attack first, then tap tap later and cast later. There may be some possibilities there. Uh, Embrose, the Dean of Shadows, two black, two cutlass, four, four. Tap, put a plus one, plus one counter on another target creature. Then Embrose, Dean of the Shadows, deals two damage to that creature. Whenever a creature you control, with a plus one, plus one counter on it dies, draw a card. Okay. Wow. So basically, as long as it's a 1-1, one, one, he can kill it, and you can draw a card off of it. And also, if you have a removal spell, you can tap him, deal damage to it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's only you only get that when it's creatures you control. My bad. This might not be as hot as I thought it was. But at least for the vanilla side, for power and toughness, uh, for casting costs, not too shabby. Um. Who knows? This kind of makes me feel like there might be another Aristocrats cards coming out that might be wanting to play a little something like this. You can kill your own stuff and draw cards. All right, next we have Rowan and Will are back. Dun 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 dun. Modal Planeswalkers. Now this is something new. So let's talk about that. So uh, the Scholar of Sparks here is a red and two colorless, and she says instant and sorcery spells you cast cost one less to cast. So she's three mana for a 2-2 Planeswalker who comes in basically with three loyalty and makes all your spells cheaper. I mean, already seems pretty sweet. Uh, and the plus one is uh, one damage to each opponent. If you've drawn three or more cards this turn, she deals three damage to each opponent instead. Okay, so that's not so hot. Uh, the cost reduction seems nice, but other than that, probably not. Uh, minus four, you get an emblem. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, you may pay two colors. If you do, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Eh, might be a little something in there for that. Not really sure. Now we got a will here. Scholar of the Frost. Five mana for four loyalty. Uh, once again, instant sorcery spells are one less. He says plus one. Up to one target creature has base power 0, 2 to the end of turn. So he has a protection plus. That's pretty good for this side. Minus three, draw two cards. That's also pretty good. Uh, considering he comes in with four. Um, I mean, worst case scenario, you spend five mana, draw three cards, he soaks up some damage from an attacker. I mean, that's not terrible. Uh, minus seven, exile up to five target permanents for each permanent exile this way. Its controller creates a 4-4 blue and red elemental creature token. And you might be thinking to yourself, why would I want to do that to somebody? Well, it says exile up to five target permanents. So if it's late game and you get him down and get him up to seven, you could exile your extra land or treasure tokens, or anything, because it says just permanence, and turn them into five, four, four blue, red elemental tokens, which is basically 20 damage and a kill. So, not real impressed. I don't see anything overpowered here, but I do see some fun. So, kind of, kind of glad it's not running away with the show here. Uh, oh, back to the Deans again. Uh, this one is the red-white Deans. Uh, we have Plarg, the Dean of Chaos. For a red and a cutlass, we have a 2-2. So, all right, we're already at value town. Uh, tap, discard a card, draw a card. That seems real good. I always like Merfolk Looter. 
Uh, Morphoke Looter is also really good when it's a 2-2, not a 1-1. Uh, but it also has one red and four colorless tap. Reveal cards from top of your library until you reveal a non-legendary, non-land card with mana value three or less. You may cast the card without paying its mana cost. Put all revealed cards not cast this way on the bottom of your library in any random order. Okay, just wow. I mean, not only can you draw cards to get to five mana, but late game, if you draw him late game and you've got five mana, he's not a chunky vanilla 2-2 two -two merfolk looter and you have no cards in your hand. You're like, oh, well, I'll just play this guy. Next turn I'll untap and I got my five mana. I'm just going to burn through my deck and play stuff for free. Seems pretty sweet. I like it. Not overpowered because it takes five mana. It's got a good early game. It's got a good late game. Nice balanced card. I, I, I like that. Uh, for the white side, we have Augusta, the Dean of the Order, a white and two cuddlers for a 1-3. Okay. Uh, it says, other tapped creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0. Oh. Other untapped creatures you control get plus 0, oh, plus 1. So everything else is pumped except this. And it's a 1-3. Whenever you attack, untap each creature you control, then tap any number of creatures you control. Okay, untap each creature you control, then tap other tap creatures you control. Okay. I'm not sure what to think about that. Um, yeah, I don't really see. Any, I mean, maybe I'm missing something. There's some cards going to come out and make this worth something, but I'm just not seeing it. it seems a little weak to me. So as we move on next, we have the Blue Green Deans, uh, Kayani, Kayini, K, we'll call her K, is the Dean of Substance with Green and Two Cuddlers for 2-2, two, two. all right, a little overcosted. Uh, exile top card of your library by tapping it. If it's a land card, put it in your hand, otherwise put a study counter on it. Okay, otherwise put a study counter, okay. For a green and four cuddlers, create a 0-0 zero, zero green and blue fractal creature token, put a plus one plus one counter on it for each different mana value among non-land cards you own in exile with study counters on them. That seems, so the tap to get a card, uh, to get a land card off top of your deck is really cool. The zero zero green and blue fractal creature seems like a lot of work, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, I have possibilities. I, it is an elf. I mean, it could be worse. Uh, so, Embraham, Dean of Theory, I guess. Uh, two blue, two cuddleless. It's a 3-3 three, three flying. Uh, for X, blue, blue, tap, exile top X cards of your library. Put a study counter on each of them. Then you may put a card you own in exile with a study counter on it into your hand. Okay, I can see how you could play that and then like make a giant fractal with the other Dean. But it seems a little backwards. I mean, three mana basically says tap, draw a card. Uh, and you can dig deeper to get, you know, different ones. It, it, it could be a thing. I, I, I don't think it's that terrible. could be a thing. So as we move on here. So as we talked about in this, uh, in this set, every house... Um, inside the college was made by a dragon, an elder dragon. Uh, and so far they've actually spoiled the silver cool dra dragon, which is uh, Shadrix here. Uh, white, black, three cuddlers for the elder dragon. It's a 2-5 uh, with flying and double strike. So essentially a 4-5. Um, yeah, basically just a 4-5. Now it says at the end of, at the beginning of your combat on your turn, you may choose two. Each mode must trigger uh, must target a different player. So a player gets a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying. Target player draws a card, loses a life. Target player puts a plus one, plus one counter on each creature they control. So this seems pretty good. Um, letting your opponent draw a card and give them a life is a thing. Also, too, you can put counters on your guy, give them a 2-1 flyer. I mean, they have to block if they're taking six damage. So you're basically just pumping your team or give them the 2-1 flyer, draw a card, and lose a life every turn. I mean, yeah, they get to block this guy, but he's basically a personal howling mine that 
at some point, if you get through with them, may very well just devastate them. So this is a really unique take on an Elder Dragon with different abilities and how it plays out along with the choice. So this is very interesting, and I do like this. I, th I think this is a pretty cool-looking card. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun in some decks. So that's the only Elder Dragon we got spoiled so far. So the next thing we'll talk about is we have the Dragon's Guard Elite. Let's say green and the Cuddleless Rare. 2-2, two, two, and it has Magecraft. Uh, for this one, it gets a plus one, plus one counter anytime you activate your Magecraft, which is you cast or, instant, cast or copy an instant sorcery. So, not too bad. It's basically a card that can pump itself. I'm looking at, I see Gruel, I see red, you know, uh, green, blue even, with counter spells or removal or tempo, where this card just starts small and just gets humongous. And then late game, once you get to six mana, I mean... He, be, he goes from being a, you know, if he's got four counters from a 6-6, six, six, you know, to a 10-10, may very, very well kill people. This this could be a staple um, in certain decks if there's, if, if we come to find that the whole Magecraft mechanic itself uh, is very abusable because of good instant sorcery cards. This may be one of those cards at a company that, that might be in those decks that could really abuse the whole Magecraft mechanic. So, not too shabby. Uh, the Archmage Emeritus, uh, four mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Uh, this Magecraft here, Instant Sorcery, or you copy it, says draw a card. Now this is the kind of things that blue decks have been waiting for. Um, I mean, just wow. I mean, yeah, it's four mana to cast. Your shields might be down for a little bit. But if you get him to stick late game, and they got nothing to do about him, I mean, just think about that. I mean, you're hitting them for two. They try to do something to deal with him or make a threat. You counterspell it, draw a card. Counterspell, <clears throat> excuse me. Counterspell again, draw a card. Bounce your spell, draw a card. Kill your creature you just cast, draw a card. Like this has some serious potential to be good. Um, in the right kind of deck, if standard has the right kind of uh, deck makeup to make this a good card. If it doesn't, if everything's too fast, too much removal, this might never see the light of day, unfortunately, even though it could be a good a good closer for blue decks. So next thing I want to do, I would like to move on and talk about all these special cards that they're going to be printing. So they revealed a lot of them today. Uh, see, we have uh, they're going to do Day of Judgment again. Basically, it's a story all creatures. They're going to reprint Channel. We have Blue Sun Zenith. Ephemerate, Village Rites, Mind's Desire, Defiant Strike, Putrefy, Harmonize. I mean, just wow. And we have uh, Teferi's card up there. Uh, I forget what it's called. I think it's his protection spell, even though it says it's a mythic. Uh, but, I mean, wow. Those are some knife mythics. Decent rares. Um... These are some pretty sweet cards. Not going to lie, guys. I really like this. I'm really impressed by it. Uh, I really see this being more like the uh, um, the old uh, the ones from Keldheim um, and Amon Ket, you know, invocations and things like that. So here's another set of them. We have Whirlwind Denials getting printed, it looks like. Uh... I'll recognize an Inquisition of Cold Zazak anywhere I see one. Uh, Dark Rituals getting printed. Now that's going to be sweet, especially in... Could you guys imagine that in foil? I cannot wait to pull that in foil. And it's a rare, so that might be worth a lot of money. Um, cultivate, eh. Growth Spiral. Yeah, let's put a rare Growth Spiral in there since we just banned this card. Uh, basically by just taking all the other cards that were good out of the set that it went with. Um, don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining because I think it's a little overpowered myself, but... It's all right, I guess. Weather the storm um, as a rare, Ugh. not real fond of that. Sign in blood, target player draws two cards, loses two life for two black. That's a sweet card. Uh, probably won't see very much play, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, good old Urza's rage is back, so pretty nice art. I do like that. Snakeskin veil. We just had this um, in our last set, so I don't see this being doing being or doing too much. Uh, now, Crows and Grip, that's a staple in a lot of decks because of Split Second, Destroy an Artifact or Enchantment. 
this card, especially the rare version of it, I think is going to be uh, a nice, uh, juicy price, even for a rare. So as we move on to the rest of them, uh, we have a good old Counterspell. Uh, that looks pretty sweet. Um, I'd have to see the card in person to like see the texture of it to see if I'd like it or not. Um, I think I would, but if it, it looks kind of dull in the picture that I got, so maybe not. Um, and then we have, uh, what is that? Choboku. Anyway, it's a shock. Um, so, eh, not too bad. Uh, Abundant Harvest. Now, this is interesting. So, for those of you who don't know, you're like, I don't remember ever seeing Abundant Harvest. I've played Magic forever. Well, that's because you haven't. Abundant Harvest is actually not going to be actually printed on an actual regular card until Modern Horizons 2. They actually pulled it forward into this set so it could be part of this collection. And if you look at it, for one green, choose a land or non-land. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you find the chosen kind. Put that card into your hand, the rest on the bottom library in any order. It's basically a tutor. I mean, you're like, I need a land. Turn one. Forest. Land. Flip, flip, flip. Oh, I got my second land. Sweet. Uh, oh, look. I have more lands in my hand than I know what to do with. Non-land. Flip, flip, flip. There we go. I took all the lands off the top of my deck I didn't need because my deck's messed up. Now they're now on the bottom, plus I got to keep a card from it. I mean, for a rare, this just sounds nuts to me. I see this in every deck that plays green. I just don't see how you couldn't. I mean, it gets anything. When you say non-land, enchantment, sorcery, instant. I mean, yeah, you may pull or hit a bad card, but you still get to draw. I mean, one green, draw a card. That's what this says. One green, draw a card of two options. I mean, I'm just dumbfounded. I think it's, I think it's broken. I mean, if, in my personal opinion, you know, if the Two mana one you can cast from free cast for free uh, to get a lander creature from Eldraine. Um, I don't even remember what it's called anymore. Uh, but anyway, you cast that for free. This is one. It might as well be the same thing on turn one. I, yeah. I mean, I guess you take the first thing you hit so you don't get a choice, but I just see that being very powerful. I think that's going to be a mistake. Um. But anyway, moving on, we're getting Time Warp reprinted. Nothing like good old Time Walk for five mana, right? I'm real happy to see that. I remember playing back in the day when that was in. Oh, that was a fun time. Strategic Planning gets printed in here as an uncommon. I like this picture. This Strategic Planning is pretty sweet looking. And we have Lightning Bolt. Good old Lightning Bolt. Not real fond of the picture, <clears throat> but it, it might grow on me. Uh, we have Duress. Um, yeah, to be honest, that's the dumbest picture I think I've ever seen for Duress. I mean, the picture's not bad. I just don't see the point to it being with Duress. I just, kind of like Lightning Bolt, right? Like, eh, I don't really see a Lightning Bolt. There's like some, there's some speckle and some sparks under it. So I'll, you know, I'll suspend disbelief for a minute. You know, over here on Duress, we've got a couple hands popping a zit, maybe. I don't know. Um... Who knows, maybe the actual card, when I see it, will be a lot better looking texture-wise or what have you. Maybe it'll grow on me, but right now, I'm just not feeling it. Uh, <laughs> we knew about these already. Demonic Tutor. Um, this card looks beautiful to me. Um, in foil, I think this is going to be something special. God, I hope it's nice in foil. We have Opt. Uh, not too shabby. I get the idea, um, but it's, it's an Opt. Swords to Plowshares. Uh, I mean, it's the swords. How can it not be good? Uh, as far as the art, not a big fan. But I can see I can see where it's got a, a little niche market that might want to have four of these in, this, in one of their decks that they're playing this kind of stuff. So, uh, no hating here. No hating. You like the art? You like the art. I'm good with that. So, with that said, guys, uh, that's everything that we got to look on the video today. So, once again, I just want to thank you and... Uh, thanks for you to take the time to watch the video, go through all this stuff with me uh, so we can actually have a good time and see what's going on. Um, these are some really sweet spoilers. I like these cards. I like these alternate art cards. Some of the cards they first come out with, 
uh, that we looked at. Yeah, they're Planeswalkers. Yeah, they're new spells. They got these different abilities, but they don't feel overpowered, and that's what I like. I haven't yet seen any of these cards that are really going to get out of hand in the standard environment. And I think that's really what we need right now because we already have a standard environment that's like close to modern. Um, well, as far as the feel goes of card power compared to other cards, you know, there's some cards that are just so strong and they just do so much that it's almost like a modern kind of format feel uh, with less decks, obviously. Uh, but anyway, guys, so thanks a lot for your time. I really do appreciate it. Hit the like below, subscribe, help me support the channel and keep these things going. And as always, guys, this is your captain speaking. I'll see you next time for more Strixhaven reveals. And as always, get ready to go out there. Get vaccinated, play some friends with Magic the Gathering, just like the good old days back in back when I was young. We played in real cardboard. Get out there, go to your local game store, show some support, and as always, be kind out there, guys, and I'll see you next time.